Hello YouTube watchers, welcome back to Andrew's Garage. No, what shall we call this place? I don't know. Crappy Ducati electronics troubleshooting place. So here I am with my Ducati and uh, yeah, it's been about hmm, three weeks since I have been able to ride my Ducati but uh, I had a bit of a breakthrough last week and I wanted to share with you because if you own a Ducati uh, you might be having some technical difficulties and I hope I can maybe share what I've learned and help you out. So here we are. So what's been happening over the last two weeks I hear you ask and I've just been having a wonderful time because my friends and I, Mr. Voltmeter and Mrs. Battery Charger have just been having a wonderful time getting plugged in and plugged out and oh, and it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just been the best, we've just had the best time ever. My voltmeter actually broke in the process of this one. That little, that, that's how it's supposed to look, right? And it's now, now it looks like this. So that, my little end fell off, it doesn't matter, it fell off the look. Anyway, so <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of diagnostics and um, I found one page, one, one website on the whole entire World Wide Web that actually explains something that makes a slight bit of rational like sense. It, it made a little bit of sense. And I followed what was on that site and uh, what was written on that um, forum. And voila, my motorbike is fixed. Ah! Motorcycle charging system 101. Welcome to the class. So on a Ducati, and I'm pretty sure most bikes, you have three parts that work together and the sole purpose, well pretty much almost the sole purpose of these three components is so that you can start your bike the next time you go to ride it. And, um, and that is to keep the battery charged. So the three parts that do that on a motorbike are your stator, your rectifier regulator and your battery. And that's it. That's the three parts. Um, there's pretty much not, that's, that's it. This is not very complicating. I thought it was going to be way more complicating, but it turns out that in a nutshell, that is it. There are a few bits and pieces, but I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to go into the basics and show you what I did on my bike. So what you have is the first component is the stator. So the stator is responsible for creating some um, current, some voltage to then feed back to the battery. Okay, so its only job is to sit inside the engine and when the engine is running, it creates voltage and it gets fed back into the battery to charge the battery again, that's it. In between the stator and the battery, you have a thing called the rec reg or the rectifier regulator. Some places they just call them a regulator. And so uh, when I was looking for buying one for my Ducati, it was just called the regulator. So the regulators in these Ducatis are the same for almost all the models, okay? The plugs just plug in and out, they're a piece of cake. Uh, I went on eBay and I got one for $25. It was very cheap. Like, it's, it's, it's a part that you're not gonna muck around with too much. But anyway, I, uh, I got that um, to replace. And in the end, it did actually turn out that most likely the regulator was not working as well as it should have. Might have been okay, um, but it wasn't the main problem. But I swapped it out anyway for 25 bucks. I'm not too worried. It wasn't too, much, too expensive. Okay, one thing that became clear is that you can start going through and swapping out all the parts. So you can, you know, buy a new battery and you can buy a new stator and you can buy a new regulator, you can buy all the bits new. Um, and in my case, it probably wouldn't have solved my problem. You see, like the reality is that stators most often are, are fine. It's not gonna be the actual stator that has a problem. Okay, if you actually go to the same website, the, the fa same forum post that I mentioned earlier. If you go there, it actually explains to you how to test your 
uh, stator and how to test the rec reg. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy, but it might, might seem a bit daunting, but it's really very, very simple. You just, yeah, it, look, it's all explained there. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how to test it. When I tested mine, it turned out it was working pretty good. Is it working like 100%? Probably not but it's it's good enough to create the charge so there, i knew that the stata after checking the stata it was fine there's no problem with the stata next the rec reg um i did actually end up plugging the old one back in the other thing that i was doing is to check the battery and i had a feeling that the battery was not working very well but like it wasn't holding charge or it was discharging quickly but again i just tested it and to do that I took it out of the bike and I just put it on the voltage, I charged it, I put it on the voltmeter, it was fine, there was no drops, it was holding charge, so it was fine. It turned out that the problem for the second time was with the wiring, believe it or not. Now, I was kind of a bit, I'm a little bit surprised, well I was a little bit surprised, okay, because you think a wire running through it doesn't move inside the bike it just sits there it's not not being stressed or anything why would that be a problem but you know this bike is now 15 years old and one of the uh, realizations i had is that for 15 years every time this bike was started the wiring which runs right i kind of i'll see if i can show you a bit closer in a minute but it runs right through where the cylinders are so for years the heat from that engine would have been you know creating an effect some detrimental effect on those on, on the wiring and that's what happened here so I'm now going to show you the exact fix for what I've had to do to get my bike working. Okay, so here we go. So um, as you can see, the, oh, let's have a look down here. Okay, so what we have is, this is the stator in here. And the stator wire, stator wire, the stator cable comes out through the block here and runs up underneath the engine. Okay, and it runs up through underneath. It was attached to the frame here with some uh, zip ties and it goes up underneath the seat, okay? Just taken the rear seat off um, so you can see this wonderful little contraption here. This is the regulator, the rectifier regulator. Um, they all pretty much have fins so that they can displace some heat. These days, the old ones never used to have any fins, but this one does. So that's it there, okay? Now, this wiring here, <clears throat> this is where you can see that I've had to start dodging things up. So what I ended up doing was, I, and I'm not going to rip it apart now, but I had to splice off the two red cables. So there are two red cables that come out, as well as two green cables. I had to, um, so I had to cut up the two red cables and instead of having them join into the loom with one of these crappy connectors down here, okay, I've run two wires, like actual new wire from that cable straight to the battery. Okay, so straight up to the battery. So I've lifted up the tank so you can have a bit of a look at um, what I've done. So there's that wire now, there's two additional wires. I use red and black just to um, be a little bit more visual for me. And I just got some wire there. It's actually quite good um, thicker gauge wire. And I've run it straight from those red, um, red wires coming from the regulator, straight through up in here and uh, try to route it away from the cylinders up nice and high. I don't know if you can see that underneath the airbox here. And then, okay, and you can see here that I have now just put here the red and white wires into that positive terminal. Okay, now, <clears throat> not the best, neatest finish at the moment. Um, uh, when I get a chance, I'm gonna go to J car and get some proper terminals. There's some nice round terminals I can just put straight um, underneath that um, bolt for the terminal and then that way 
it'll be a much better connection. But that's all I've had to do. Okay, now that was enough to change the to get the volts from around 12.9 to 13.1 all the way up to 14. So there was a whole bunch of resistance that was going through um, into there from the rectifier regulator. Now the other thing that I, I did end up noticing is um, the old one, as I said to you before, the old rec reg um, wasn't working as efficiently and I think what's hap what happened was the stator was producing it, its volts and as it was going up into the rec reg, <clears throat> um, there was a lot of, like, it was uh, the, the wire was really really hot before okay and I think now that I've changed out that wire the new connection and the rec reg working better it, it sending it's sending it's going to send the volts through to the battery whereas before it would have been there would have been a bottleneck and would have like overheated the rec reg and the wires coming through there so I definitely think um, that was part of the reason why it was, there's a lot of resistance in that system and it was it's actually feeling really, really hot. So I imagine, I'll, I'll give you guys an update soon, but I imagine that the wires coming from the stator will now be a lot cooler because it's not just sitting there, the current's not just being loaded and not going anywhere, it's gonna go straight up to the battery through that, the new wires, okay? The other thing I did end up doing is, just because it is an old bike, is some of these, these connectors and wires that run all through the system, I actually ended up clipping off a lot of the zip ties because they were really tight and I wasn't sure whether they were causing some issues. So you can see I've got my own dodgy little zip tie here instead of the, the factory ones which were a lot thicker. So saying that guys, one of the things that this little workaround has um, potentially created a problem with is that before there is right here underneath the tank um, there is a fuse which is a 40 amp quite ginormous fuse that was protecting the system I'm assuming going the other way um, if there's ever a surge on a battery so that it doesn't kill the rig and so look one of the things that you probably should do and I might do um, if I feel a little bit more motivated to do is to put in a 40 fuse seat um, 40 amp fuse within that system so just where these black and red wires are to um to protect the um, rec reg and the stator in case there's going to overload on the battery so that's something um uh, it's going to yeah it just be something that i probably should do and i think the guy did recommend to do it uh, on the forum so yeah something something still to come because i've routed it straight to the battery the dash will now not show any battery um, issues because it's cut that section out of the system so you do not have an indicator now for the battery what i'm going to do is get that um, i have a uh, voltmeter a little little tiny volt um, indicator and a little usb charger in one i'll show you guys that in another video i'm going to put that back on and that's going to tell me if there's any voltage drops if I really really have to know but apart from that I'm not really concerned like I said earlier this is the second uh, wiring issue that I have and it's purely on connections on resistance built up in the old wires uh, so if you've got a problem with yours definitely see if you can check the wires um, you know, you might, it might just be one simple little crease um, connector or it might just be a little um, uh, crease, like a little bend in a wire that's worked its way through and has reduced what's going through. Um, it could be the rec reg. Uh, so it's, you know, always try the cheapest things first, obviously, and then work your way up from there. Um, most bikes have really cheap rec regs these days. They're, you know, mass produced by the millions. So, yeah, try that first. In a nutshell, that's it, everyone. I have learned a little bit more about bikes. I think it's a, it's a little bit more daunting than it actually is in real life to start doing some of these diagnostic work. Like, it, it seems like there's a mountain of... Um, cable running all over the bike but 
it's okay, give it a go. I don't think you're going to find that your system is a lot more complicating, unless you've got a really newer bike, then you know that, that might be something I would leave to a shop. But if it's um, something that you've got a bit of time for, well, give it a go. I did mention in my last video, and I will say it again, uh, all these little issues that I'm fixing, and there's still a couple more, I'll get to them um, in a later video. I'm not gonna speak about them now. Uh, it's helping me bond with my bike. I love my bike. It's, it's, it's my bike, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it has my sweat and tears in it. Blood as well, uh, no blood yet, but it definitely has sweat and definitely has some tears already. Everyone said it's gonna be a stator. It looks like it's gonna be the stator. It wasn't a stator, so uh, yeah, I'm very pleased that that is how it's ended up. All right guys, that's it for this episode of dodgy Ducati wiring diagnostics. If you have any questions, if you want to know more, if you want to, if you want to find out about exactly how I did it, I can make another video to show you um, the finer details. Um, I can take pictures and things. Um, just ask away. Uh, that's why I'm here. I want to help people with their Ducatis. And uh, yeah, hopefully yours is going and you're uh, enjoying the riding. All right, that's it for now, guys. See you next time.